What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, we're gonna check out 10 times WWE wrestlers learn from one huge mistake. In life, you gotta learn from your mistakes. And if you don't learn from them, then you're doomed or destined to repeat those same mistakes. So, we're gonna check out some of these instances where wrestlers are like, oh, I remember. You're not gonna get me that time or this time. Should be a good one. Appreciate all love sport. Let's get right into this video, man. The wrestler learned from their mistake. 10 times a WWE wrestler a learned from their mistake. Number 10, Brock Lesnar. Goldberg shocked the wrestling world at the Survivor Series event in 2016 mm -hmm. when he outright squashed Brock Lesnar. Legit. Nobody saw this type of win coming for Goldberg and it was presented in kayfabe that Lesnar was taken by surprise thanks to a deadly spear. When the two met in a rematch at WrestleMania 33 for the Universal title, Lesnar was fully aware of what Goldberg was capable of. It looked like Lesnar was once again going to fall victim to Goldberg. Lesnar was being annihilated by Goldberg, yet when Goldberg went for yet another spear into their WrestleMania match, Lesnar knew it was coming, so he proceeded to leapfrog over Goldberg in one of the most exciting spots Lesnar has ever delivered. The fans good, erupted good when the spot went down and it was extremely rare for Lesnar to move away from his established moveset. This was the highlight of a match that certainly over-delivered, and some even consider it to be Goldberg's greatest ever match in WWE. Number nine. On the cool, I mean, it's a, it, it works. It's it works. It was probably the most exciting, fun match of this particular WrestleMania. Um, you kind of knew what you were gonna get. They gave us exactly what we wanted. In and out, and we move on to the next thing. Didn't need to be no 20-minute classic because Goldberg can't even go that long in the ring anyway. So, uh, yeah, it definitely worked. You kind of figured uh, Brock was going to learn from his previous mistakes and end up winning anyway. So, Christian. The 2011 feud between Christian and Randy Orton was outstanding. It was. The feud showed the world that Christian was a main event talent in WWE, and Orton cites the feud as a single rivalry that gave him the confidence he needed in his career. The two had unbelievable chemistry in the ring and their matches seemed to increase in quality as yeah. the months went on. This the feud began feel. when Orton defeated Christian for the world title just days after Christian won it. The finish of this match would come when Orton would counter a springboard attempt into a mm -hmm. sinister RKO. When the two met in a rematch at the 2011 Over the Limit pay-per-view, Christian would then go for the exact same move but he had Orton scouted and as Orton was about to position himself for the RKO, Christian quickly took advantage. This was yep. ring psychology at its very best, yep. and this is one of many reasons as to why the fans and fellow wrestlers consider Christian to be one of the most underrated in-ring workers of all time. Oh, for sure, without a doubt. WWE, especially Vince, didn't really see that much value in him, but this feud right here was good, and I love that the feud was based on one more match, one more time. It was, it, this was a really fun feud, I'm not gonna lie to you. Christian definitely deserved better in WWE, He's getting treated much better in AEW, but in WWE, he deserved a lot more love, man. Number eight, Gunther. The ring general isn't just a marketing term for Gunther, as over the years, Gunther has managed to show that he's always one step ahead of his opponents. Mm -hmm. When Gunther met Randy Orton for the first time ever, Gunther almost lost to Orton thanks to an RKO. Yeah. This put Gunther in a very vulnerable position. Therefore, when the two met again at the Bash in Berlin event, Gunther knew he had to keep his wits about him. What Gunther did was focus his training regime on strengthening his neck. In promotional videos leading up to the rematch, Gunther could be this. seen performing bridges and delivering exercises that targeted his neck. This was of course done in order to make it extremely difficult for Orton to hit an RKO on him. In the actual rematch at Bash in Berlin, this training would actually help Gunther throughout the main event showdown. Yeah. Gunther would manage to escape the RKO attempt on a number of occasions, <laughs> and it did come as a disappointment that the WWE commentary team failed to reference Gunther's neck training during the match itself. Number seven. They definitely should have to really sell the idea and the fact that Gunther has scouted. He knows Randy is very dangerous. He's taking this very seriously, put in the proper training to be cautious of certain moves like the RKO. So, but either way, it was still a fantastic match, too. Seven, Melina. It was a difficult time to be a female star in WWE in the yes, early years of the PG era. WWE had put women's wrestling on the back burner, and women were barely given opportunities. And if they were given significant time on pay per view, they were usually limited as to what they could deliver. Yep. Melina and Michelle McCool are two wrestlers that would thrive in the modern day WWE. 
And these are two women that had a match that was so good in 2009 that they actually received backstage heat for trying to steal the show. That's that match crazy. took place at Night of Champions, and the match opened up with an iconic spot of McCool drop kicking Melina as she did her trademark oh, switch yeah, during her entrance. Oh. The following year, once again at the Night of Champions event, the two would meet again in another enjoyable encounter. McCool would attempt to repeat the spot only for Melina to completely outsmart her. As McCool delivered the move, Melina would jump at the last moment so McCool wouldn't get under her legs. It was an incredible spot that deserves a ton of praise. Number 6. The That's Miz a too. Our Fans are sometimes critical of The Miz's in-ring work, and whilst it's true The Miz isn't the flashiest wrestler, he's still able to have great matches, and his in-ring presence and his in-ring psychology is always excellent. During The Miz's 2023 feud with LA Knight, <laughs> Miz would take on Akira Tozawa on Raw, but when Miz went for the skull-crushing finale, Tozawa would counter this into a pinning combination to secure the biggest win of his entire career. In the world of kayfabe, it was almost as if The Miz went away and realized that his established move was easy to counter. And when Knight tried to emulate the exact spot that Tozawa delivered on Raw, Miz actually had a plan. When Knight delivered the pinning combination at the payback event, Miz quickly kicked out and banked himself into the turnbuckle. He was then in an advantageous position when Knight would come charging at him with full force, and the former WWE Champion was able to control the action in his favor. Number 5. AJ Styles Randy Orton countering moves into an RKO has been a staple of his WWE career. And when Orton for faced AJ Styles, AJ knew that he had to be on the top of his game. When AJ would go for his phenomenal forearm move during the match with Orton on SmackDown in 2017, AJ was fully aware that Orton was going to counter the move into an RKO. This springboard style move had been countered endless times by Orton, so before leaving the ropes, AJ smartly yep, jumped back down. That. Orton would amazingly actually deliver the RKO, however due to AJ jumping back down at the last second, Orton took a vicious back bump and AJ was able to take advantage of yep. the situation. AJ tough. would then transition into a 450, however Orton had enough time to recover so he was able to roll out the way and pop AJ up for a brutal RKO. Number 4. Shelton Benjamin They work well together in the ring, I'm not gonna lie to you. I mean AJ works well with pretty much anybody bro, he's that good, same thing with Randy. One of the most well-known spots in Raw history took place in 2005 when Shawn Michaels yep. countered a springboard attempt from ah. Shelton Benjamin into Beautiful. a switch in music. What fans often forgot is that HBK attempted to repeat the spot in their rematch. However, Benjamin had learned from his mistake and had a surprise in store for Mr. WrestleMania. As the two went to perform the exact same spot as their first match, Benjamin would counter HBK's yep. superkick into a kick of his too. own. It was wonderful storytelling and the two ultimately deserved a match on pay-per-view as they had instant chemistry in the ring. Number 3 Oh no, Sheldon Benjamin and HBK, I mean they they can go. Both of them guys can can go in the ring. So, I, you know, it would have been nice to have a, a nice little mini feud with these guys. Uh, we did get, you know, a couple of matches, but they are fantastic at what they do. Randy Orton by the time Randy Orton and John Cena faced off inside the Hell in a Cell in 2014, the two had wrestled each other so many times that they could basically predict each other's next move. Uh -huh. One of Cena's staple moves is the shoulder tackle, and when Orton was hit by one of these inside the cell, he instantly realized that Cena was going to hit a number of them in succession. Orton also realized that the position of Cena's shoulder tackle would make it incredibly easy to transition into an RKO. And that's exactly what Orton did. Yep. This spot looked amazing as it looked insanely fluid, and both men got the timing spot on. If the two Hopefully we're able to get at least one more go with these guys on his last run. His only right when his greatest of opponents or rivals or whatever you want to say, I hope we're able to get one more run, one more match between Randy Orton and John Cena. We made again in the WWE ring during Cena's final WWE run, which is set for 2025, then it's extremely likely that callbacks and spots of this nature will be featured in their match. Hope we're able to see Number two, it. Kofi Kingston. Continuity and callbacks were rare in WWE before Super Triple rare. H took over, and most of the continuity came from improvised moments from the wrestlers themselves. At the 2009 No Way Out pay-per-view, Kofi Kingston was unable to compete in the Elimination Chamber match. This was due to the dastardly Edge oh, taking him oh out of action God. as he was entering the match. The following bro. year, as Kingston was entering the chamber again, Kingston would look around and make yeah. sure that nobody was going to take him out. This was a great touch from Kingston and a smart reference as to what happened the year oh, prior. This was cool. even picked up by Michael Cole on commentary and this certainly added some appropriate context for the fans who would potentially miss last year's event. 
And number one, John Cena. The finish of the first ever John Cena vs. Rock mm. match saw Cena go for his own version of the people's elbow. Yep. Cena's rare moment of cockiness would actually cost him the yep, match, as the, the Rock match. would see it coming and pop up and deliver a rock bottom for the victory. This was stellar storytelling from both men as Cena rarely went out of his comfort zone in his matches, and the one time he did, it cost him the biggest main event match of his entire career. The following year during the WrestleMania 29 rematch, Cena would go for the people's elbow yet again. This was executed perfectly as Cena questioned if he was doing the right thing by going for the move, and the WWE commentary team were quick to reference the continuity from last year's matchup. This time The Rock did indeed pop up, Yet Cena saw it coming, yeah, so he held onto the ropes and mocked the Great One. This was arguably the highlight in the entire match, and it was a fantastic piece of in-ring psychology from Cena. But there you have it, folks. Ten Twice in a lifetime, never forget. <laughs> but yeah, man, that was uh, that was a good moment of wrestling remembering. Hey, you got me that time last year. You're not getting me this time. Comment down below. Let me know if you guys remember any like wrestlers remembering. Oh. I, you know, I remember when you hit me with this move, but you're not going to hit me with this move the same way again. If they weren't listening in this video, I love when wrestlers have a brain and they actually use them in matches with opponents they've already had a few matches with. So they try something different to get the upper hand or they remember what moves to avoid potentially. I love that. Shows that the wrestlers have brains. Show that we have brains. And remember, hey, he got hit with that. He should probably watch out for that. I like that the, the continuity in certain wrestlers in their feuds and matches. But I appreciate all love support. Road to 150K. Appreciate y'all kicking it with me. See y'all next one. Peace.